and welcome to today's talk, Friday the 14th of July. Now, I make no apology at all today for returning to the topic of excess deaths. The last week that we have data for in the United Kingdom, deaths were 8.8% higher than we would expect for the time of year. This is just an ongoing issue in the United Kingdom and indeed around the world. And today I want to be looking at some European data and seeing what we can learn from this. This is still greeted by a deafening silence from government, from the health authorities and pretty well um, universally from mainstream media. But we're going to keep on with it because there are some ideas I've got another video coming out probably uh, later today or tomorrow where we talk about some research from Denmark as well, which might help. But let's just look at uh, briefly what's going on at the moment. Week ending the 30th of July, this week 26, 2023. 10,373 deaths were registered in England and Wales. Now, interestingly, they're saying 129 of these mentioned uh, coronavirus. So this number's way down. And of course, not all of these were from coronavirus. The, well, we could argue about the, the proportion, but, but, but it's a 1.2% of all deaths. The official data is saying that of the 129 deaths involving COVID-19, 61.279 deaths had this re uh, recorded as the underlying cause. Not always uh, sure about that. I think very often it's so wrapped up with comorbidities and old age, it's really quite difficult pretty well impossible to tell. It's a rather subjective medical opinion. But what we can say for sure is that the COVID deaths are way, way down. Uh, probably well under 1.2% of all, all deaths uh, at, at the moment. Number of deaths was above the five-year average. Private homes, 22.9%. So we see a lot of people are dying at home. Now, you could argue that this is good. It's always better to die at home than die in hospital, but it's still higher than we would expect. Hospitals, it's 6.1. Care homes, it's 3.7. Number of deaths registered in the UK as a whole, not just England and Wales, 11,763. 8.8% above the five-year average. This is persisting. Now, let's look at the um, useful graphic published by the Office for National Statistics that we've looked at for some time now. This is the latest updated version. Uh, the black line, of course, is the deaths we would expect. And for example, we see that throughout 2022, which we'll be looking at again in a minute, the, the deaths were higher than we would have expected. During the pandemic waves, of course, the blue COVID deaths there, less surprising. But the deaths carrying on now in excess levels, these are the most recent figures that we have. And we see that they are um, consistently higher. So this represents here... This line here represents 8.8%. So we can see it was a little higher the week before and a little higher the week before. Now, um, I'm going to go on and look at some graphics from European data in a minute. Uh, but I just want to give you some figures from the European data, first of all. Now, um, this is the data. It's from Eurostat. It's, it's well-collected data. The, the European uh, Union area are good at collecting data. They're all fairly advanced um, countries with pretty well um, pre pretty established data collecting methodologies so pretty happy with this quality of data excess mortality in the european union between january 2020 and may 2023 now it followed the covid waves in 2020 and 2021 although as we'll see not really there was no excess deaths in finland norway and denmark in, in 2020 so the scandinavian countries were a bit different um, more on why that might be uh, later. Um, anyway, the following data is based on the 2016 to 2019 that we would expect in the pre the pre uh, pandemic years. So compared to 2016 to 2019, uh, EU data for a whole as a whole, January 2022 it was up by 8.1, February 8.3, March it was up by 6.7, April it was up by 12 percent. May it was up by 8, June it was up by 8.4, July it was up by 17.4. Now these are high increases. 2022 is when Omicron was around, way less pathogenic, caused much less severe disease. We can't attribute any, well we contribute some of these deaths to COVID obviously, but, but the majority not. 
these are none directly COVID related deaths. They're due to other factor or factors, and obviously, I think it's going to be factors, several uh, factors. Um, now, 558,000 additional deaths in the European Union in July. So this July figure here, this 17.1% represents 58,000 deaths. This is absolutely uh, astronomical levels of excess deaths ongoing, uh, but particularly so in 2022 when we wouldn't have expected it. 2.8% in July 2020. So in July 2020, in the pandemic year, July 2020, uh, before any uh, before any vaccination, of course, it was 2.8%. So when the vaccination programme had been rolled out, when Omicron was there, when there'd been lots of herd immunity, the excess deaths was 17.1%. In July 2020, at the height of the pandemic, it was 2.8%. Uh, so we see that there are other factors here going on. This is not just the... No one's saying that COVID's not a dangerous disease. Of course it is. Um, um, but it's not accounting for most of these excess deaths. It was 5.7% higher in July 2021. Uh, that, that represents uh, 19,700 deaths. So higher in 2021, lower in, lower in uh, 2020. Uh, but much higher in uh, 2022. August uh, 2022, uh, the excess deaths was 13.9%, uh, so pretty high again, compared to 76 in August 2022, but even that represented 27,300 deaths. And uh, even in 2021, it was only 9.1%. So again, in 2022, in 2022, we see it's high. This is 2022 data. Apart from the fact I've spelled August wrong, but please excuse me for that. Uh, September, anyway, September 2022, 10.3%. October, 11.6%. More excess deaths. November, December, uh, a huge 20%. Now, of course, this is not just because it's winter. This is higher than we would expect for December's. Uh, that, and that represented 92,500 additional deaths in December 2022 in the European Union. 2022 was not a good year. How are we doing in 2023? The answer is slightly better. Um, January, it was 3.9%, what we would expect. February, for the first time in several years, it was actually 1.4% below. Now, we would expect it to be low all the time because the people that were vulnerable and were about to die would have, been, uh, would have succumbed to COVID typically shortly before they were going to die anyway. So in other words, COVID would expect to filter out, if you like, the weaker, more vulnerable members of society. So we'd actually expect death rates to be lower. Uh, but it's not what we're seeing, apart from this one month. March, it's uh, gone up to plus 0.9%. April 2023, 3.3% 3 .3 higher than we would expect. And even that represents 11,900 additional deaths. May, it's 2.9% uh, above what we would expect. So persisting, if not quite at the high numbers of 2022. Altogether, January 2020 to May 2023, 1.765 million additional deaths. Compared with the average numbers for 16 to 19. So pandemic and the effects that go with the pandemic, 1,765,000 additional deaths. Uh, the deaths higher than the five-year average were 11.8% higher in 2020, somewhat expected because of the pandemic. 2021, 14% higher, somewhat expected because of the pandemic. 2022, 11.1% higher, not what we would expect. Can't be attributed to COVID. And the first five months of 2023 average out at 1.9%. But what we do see in 2022 is a big variation between countries as well. So Romania for example, somewhat well, great country, but somewhat less sophisticated, uh, lower vaccine vaccination rates, for example, in Romania, 3.4% um, additional deaths in 2022. Sweden, with a completely different set of policies as regards lockdown, 3.9% deaths higher than you would expect in 2022. Uh, Hungary, again, somewhat um, less advanced in some ways, 5.2%. 
But Cyprus, Malta and Finland, all very high excess deaths in 2022. So a, a fair variation between countries. That That's true. Quite a big variation between countries. We need to look at those factors and see how that's explained. In the first five months of uh, 2023, uh, excess deaths in Bulgaria are down. Good. Excess deaths in Romania are down. The Baltic, Lithuania, excess deaths are down. Less, quite a bit less than we would expect. This is what we'd expect everywhere. But in Ireland, excess deaths for 2023 are 10.2% above what we would expect. Netherlands, 95 and Austria, 9.3% above what we would expect. So we are seeing um, excess deaths in quite a few countries, much higher than we would expect, lower only in a few countries, and where it's lower is more the Eastern European uh, countries. Now let me just show you a few more graphics that illustrate that. Uh, this is uh, Belgium. Now, this is the 0% line here. So we see that Belgium, again, has been above for quite a lot of the time, now only going back up to about zero. So, so far, so good for 2023 in Belgium, um, but has been really quite high for long periods of time. This is Denmark. Interesting, the excess deaths in Denmark didn't go... Um, really that much higher until about May. Yeah, that's about May 2020 they started going up. There was a small peak before that, probably COVID related. But um, as we see, that's the zero line there for 2021, 2022 high. And now we see Denmark has increased again. So that's January, February, March, April. So higher death rates in uh, Belgium in April. And that line there is the uh, plus 10% line. So about 9% excess deaths uh, in uh, Denmark. This is Finland. Again, uh, excess deaths didn't go up that much. There's the 0% line into up until uh, into 2020. But 2021, 2022, really quite high. And now we can see in Finland the latest data is well above, that's the 10% line, well above 10% above what we would expect. But bear in mind that this is the zero line here. So if I just bring this, can I bring this down to the zero line? Um, yeah, that, that's the zero line is uh, there. So everything there that you can see is well above these excess deaths through 2020, 2020, 2020, uh, or 2021, 2022, and now peaked again in uh, April. April, May 2023. Uh, this is France. Again, similar pattern, well above the zero line for a lot of the time when we wouldn't expect it. Uh, that one's Germany. Again, that's the zero line there. So again, we see above average for uh, a lot of 2022 when we wouldn't expect it. Uh, Ireland, as we've seen, quite high at the moment well above uh, what we would expect for 2022 again. Italy, Italy's thankfully low at the moment. Let's hope that's, <coughs> let's hope that's maintained. But it's been high for 2021, 2022. Uh, that one's Netherlands, again, higher during long periods of time. Uh, now, I've, here I've put in Romania with the European average. So European average is the and this is what epidemiologists should be doing a lot of these sort of comparative studies because this is quite this is quite interesting this one so we've got um european union in dark blue and uh, romania in light blue so what we see is the peaks during the pandemic peaks in romania were higher than the european union uh, they do have a lower vaccination rate in romania but then we see that uh, all throughout 2022, the death rates in Romania were consistently lower than in the European Union. Is there anything to be learned from that is an interesting question. Uh, that one is Spain. Again, that's the 0% line there. So Spain we see is higher in 2021 and 2022. And this last one here is Sweden with a different lockdown approach. So what we see in Sweden, that despite 
the limit well, okay it was higher there but despite the limited lockdowns well they weren't locked down really it was just advisory we see the death rates were much higher in the european union and indeed the death rates have stayed much higher in the european union average in dark blue compared to sweden in the uh, in the orangey color there so sweden in many ways has done has done um, much better so variety of factors that we can discuss um and there's some factors that we we can't openly discuss unfortunately lockdown factors of course people not accessing accessing health care the the isolation the depression the lack of social contact all of these are going to be big factors pharmaceutical interventions that weren't given during the pandemic and possibly pharmaceutical interventions that were given during the pandemic that weren't normally given we're not we're not trying to make any point here we're just saying we need to be able to account for everything so that's all i want to say in this video on a completely separate topic these are the youtube community guidelines on uh, vaccine safety a content alleging that vaccines cause chronic side effects outside of the rare side effects that are recognized by the health authorities claims about covid-19 vaccines that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the world health organization we can't contradict the world health organization mustn't contradict the world health organization and mustn't get mad about it either um Claims that approved COVID vaccine will cause, so we can't say that an approved COVID vaccine will cause that or that or that. We're not saying it does cause all these, it'd be nice to be able to talk about it. We, we, we can't talk about these things. Not allowed to talk about those. And of course, I've got one strike recently, and that's kind of still hanging over me. So, and on the same, on the same page, um, we're also not allowed to make claims about magnetism. It's just, it's just bizarre that things that could be legitimately talked about uh, are, are put on with things that are clearly looney tune nonsense. Um, but but that's the constraints we're currently working under. So I'm not trying to make any particular point. I'm just pleading for a free and open discussion. Because it's multifactorial, but people are dying. I mean, re read the comments of some of the videos. They're just heartbreaking. Um, people have been lost recently. And uh, very little work being done about it. Um, now, next video, we are going to be talking to Dr. Vibeka Manika, who is working on this from, from Denmark. So tune in for the next uh, the next video really quite uh, interesting and uh i might give you some i might give you some feedback from other videos as well but so, some of the feedback on these videos really is quite quite moving and um if there's any academics out there really you could take any one of these videos and do a qualitative analysis on the feedback of them and it would be quite quite enlightening because between all of the people that are making comments there's a lot of uh wisdom but there's a lot of data as well so please keep leaving the comments and please keep uh, please keep reading them. They are very informative. But that's us for now. Um, these graphs do need to be explained. Uh, but I'll leave it there and thank you for watching. We will continue to monitor these excess deaths. Still 8.8% in the UK. It's um, It's high numbers. Thank you for watching.